Hello, everybody. I am back. It has been a week and a half that I have been gone. We had a lovely spring break vacation, but I'm excited to be back with you guys and finish up celebration over the next week and a half. I have lots of things to show you today and for the next week and a half. Hello, I see you guys jumping on. Hopefully that means I'm in the right place. Let's see if I can grab my iPad. Hi, Gina, how are you? I was in your neck of the woods last week. Boy, we drove through, we flew to Vegas, drove to Southern Utah and spent several days just driving through the mountains. My kids have never been to the mountains and it was spectacular. I've been to Utah many times for Stampin' Up. Hi, Joy, thank you. Um, and um, I just always come back telling my husband it is gorgeous over there. So we finally decided to go. We usually don't do anything for spring break, but this year we planned um, a trip and it was great. My kids fell in love with the mountains. They got to play in snow, which for them, it was only the second time they've ever seen snow. It, we had a freak snow here one time last year, but they really got to play with it and throw it. And it was so funny because we weren't really prepared. They were wearing like their Converse, you know, uh, shoes and my daughter had her jeans rolled up and so they weren't they weren't prepared for the snow but they loved it and the little ones the two little ones played in it forever we got in the car and they were wet um, so they loved it so it was a good trip um, it was needed it was a refresh and a kind of a recharge bat our batteries um, and um, I'm glad to be back yes first day of spring Kathy that's right today's the first day of spring boy it snuck up on me this year um, usually here I feel like uh, spring starts like late February here in South Texas but this year it's been kind of gloomy and cloudy and not really like spring so yeah today is the first day of spring hopefully you guys are enjoying the weather um, I am going to give you guys a behind the scenes sneak peek in just a minute so I'm not going to talk for much longer um, I'm going to tell you a couple of things the real story is that I have groceries being delivered <laughs> in a little while so I have to hurry up and get through um, it's not till three but sometimes they come early I don't know if you guys any of you get groceries delivered they show up early which can be a good thing unless you're doing a Facebook live right um, so I want to get rolling um, so let me just run through a couple of things if you share the video you'll be entered to win vibrant vases this was a prize a few weeks ago that never got claimed so I'm offering it up again I'll pick a winner on Friday speaking of Friday jump over and join my Facebook group if you haven't done it already you click join anybody's welcome don't worry, you don't qual have to qualify. If you're interested in, in uh, uh, Darlene, yes, AGB Groceries. If you're interested in Stampin' Up, you are welcome to join my group. Um, it's just um, a group page instead of a business page, which is what this is. And in a group page, you get um, more notifications. You'll see my posts more often. Um, so jump over there and join. And on Friday at 2 Central, I'm going to do three more Nine Lives projects. My Facebook Friday is usually usually about an hour long. And I have a host code that's connected with this week. If you use that host code, I will send you Friday's Make and Takes for free. Um, so when I'm done today, I'll put all those links up in the description for you so you can find them. So share the video and join my Facebook group, please. Um, I want my only other announcement is my remaining class to go for this month, Geared Up Garage, you guys. This class is so fun. Um, let's see, which one do I wanna show you? I have several projects in here with a video tutorial, an almost half hour video tutorial that's embedded within the PDF that has step-by-step -step, um, instructions for all the projects. So, and I'm gonna give you guys, can you guys see behind me? I'm gonna give you a behind the scenes look at how I do my classes to go. Today, um, I was getting it all ready to pack up and I thought, you know what, I bet they would like to kind of see that. So I'm gonna show you that in a second. But this class has four options, one that includes the Geared Up Garage Bundle, one that does not include this, one that is PDF only, and then one specifically for my downline. They always get it real cheap. Um, I want them to order this stuff and get their discount. Um, so if you're interested in that, again, I will add the link up at the top, or you can go over to my blog. It's at the bottom of every um, every post there. The deadline is actually Monday, March 25th. So if you haven't signed up for Geared Up Garage, I keep calling it Garage Gears. 
and it's geared up garage. If you want that class, don't wait. I get lots of emails after the deadline asking, oh, can you still add me? And typically I can't because I cut it all at one time. So this class that I'm getting ready to show you, Fable Friends, um, this is the biggest class I've ever done. You guys were amazing. Um, this is the most people I've ever had register for a to-go class. So thank you very much. It's very exciting. Um, it almost sent a panic in me because I came back from vacation and I was like, oh my gosh, this is a lot. It's a good panic. It's good, right? So, um, anyways, I pack it all. I cut all of it at one time. So if I had... Um, 50 people register. I don't cut anything or pack anything until the clip, the deadline is passed and then I cut 50. Um, and that's, that's how I do it. So I don't have extras. I don't have leftovers typically. Every now and then I'll have one or two extras. Um, but typically if you want to guarantee a class kit, make sure that you register ahead of time. Um, so the deadline is Monday. You will also get a celebration item of your choice if you get class one. Um, and there is a video in that one as well, just like this one. Okay, so that's my announcement. Those are my announcements. Before we get started on today's project, which it just looks like a regular card, but it is not. It's a box card and there's a fancy little design on the inside I'm going to show you. Um, this is the little cat, the nine lives is my product of the week. So all of my projects on my lives this week are going to, um, feature the nine lives. I actually have five projects, um, because I did one with my stamp club to go to, which I'll show you. Um, okay. So that's that. I will talk to you a little bit more about this, but I want to flip the camera around. Let's see. Oh, you know what? I have to unplug the, the microphone. Okay. Let's see. Hold with me for just a second. I'm going to bring you guys over here. Can you guys still hear me? All right, so this is how I do my class kits, all right? It's a process that goes all the way down my counters. I cut, like for the first class, I cut everything for that, and I sort them out into these bags. Everything that you need, let me turn it around. Everything that you need is in that bag, so you'll know when you're ready to make that project, you pull out that bag. And then I do the second project, third, and I until I have them all done. All right, I do most of the die cutting for you. This one, let me tell you, took a pretty long time. Those stitched rectangles are very delicate, and you have to be careful when you cut those. Um, but anyways, I do that. Look, I've done some punching for you. The only thing that um, you'll need to do is stamp. Um, sometimes a class includes a framelit, so I won't cut anything out that it that uses the uh oh we're having low connection issues are you guys still there let's see can i fix it hold on let's see if i turn the wi-fi off let's see are we back oh my goodness yay we're back okay i'm here are you guys are you guys here <laughs> you know i need to turn my wi-fi off because my phone you know, like my Verizon works better than my internet, which is ridiculous because I'm in my house. So my internet should work. That's a different story for a different day. Okay, so here we are, right? Classes, um, six projects, all in different cello bags. I do all the, the die cutting, the scoring, things that you need. And then you get a little note, has, um, you know, specific instructions, a link to the PDF. And any prod product that comes in your uh, kit, this kit included the um, flax ribbon. I always make a little treat using, featuring that cute stamp, whatever you got, whatever your class was. This one includes the paper. This time I offered an add-on where you could, if you didn't have the color blends that I um, was using in the class, you could add them on. And I actually paid the tax um, on those for you. It was a little bit of a discount as a thank you for adding those onto your class. Um, so I'm distracted by the Wi-Fi, guys. I'm so sorry. Yes, I'm back. I'm sorry if I froze. Hopefully when we upload it, it'll all be, you know, intact. <laughs> all right. And then some people get the stamp set. Some people did not add the stamp set. And then I put it all in this cello bag right here. I have these big, awesome cello bags. I put it all in. Then um, some people got celebration. Look at all these celebration things that people are getting. Um, I 
print out labels on my um, computer and they all go in a padded envelope. Um, and then I actually needed to show you over here. This is what it looks like. This is what the kit looks like. And then I put it in the padded envelope um, with the extras, the blend, the, the stamp set, the celebration, and that's it, the stamp set, right? All right, so that's what a class to go looks like. If you've never ordered one and you're like, eh, is this girl really going to send me what she says? Yeah, I am. I, I, I take a lot of pride in my class kits. I want them to be worth the value, and I want you to have um, an easy time with your kit when you get it so that you can be successful in creating those fun projects. So that's that, you guys. I thought that would be kind of fun to do a behind the scenes. I'm going to put this up. Um, so the, close your eyes. The next class is that garage, geared up garage. Deadline is the 25th. Hold on, I gotta do just a little bit of adjusting. Don't open your eyes yet. I forgot to move my light in so that we'll be right here in the right direction. There we go, we got that, okay. Whew, all right. <laughs> I'm not a professional camera person. I don't know if you could tell by that fancy camera work. All right, well, let's get started, you guys. Here's the host code for this week. It's also over on my blog. Remember, everything that I show you today is going to be over on my blog. It already is. It already uploaded. So you can go check it out, my supply list and my uh, the measurements. You can see there's quite a few measurements with this card today. Let me just find you guys on my iPad so I can see what you're saying. My daughter's been playing Minecraft on my iPad, so hopefully we've still got everything set up. Okay, all right, we're ready. So, card box. Have any of you made a card box before? It's really fun. I've done them in a few classes, and it looks like a normal card, but when you open it, there's like a little box. See that? Isn't that fun? And I made a little nighttime scene with the cats. Aren't they so cute? I'm going to also show you how you can get that cat to flip um, the other way. When you punch it, it's normal like this. Did I even grab? No, nope, I got to grab it. And then we want it to face the other way so that our cats aren't all facing the other way. Because when you do them two different ways, they don't look identical. Okay, so let's do that. Let's get it together. I did not grab the cat punch. Let me grab that in my punches over here. The cat punch is something that's been around for a while. Um, it came out in the holiday catalog, not this past holiday catalog, but the holiday catalog before that. Good grief, I didn't grab my blends either. I'm still in vacation mode apparently. So when we punch our cat, See, he'll be facing that way and we want one to face that way so that's what we're gonna do all right you're gonna need this is called well let's stamp our normal cats first okay and then I'm gonna tell you the the fancy technique is called mirror stamping and look I have ink you guys I'm a messy stamper I don't know if you've noticed that or not but I am a very messy stamper I'm just, I have too many things to do to clean. I don't wanna clean. I don't wanna clean my stamps. I know that's dumb, right? Okay, so here's my Stamparatus. I have my cat on here, on my plate. I'm gonna get Thick Whisper White cardstock. Because I'm coloring with my blends, I prefer to color with, um, on Thick Whisper White. You can do regular Whisper White, or you can do Thick Whisper White, but I'm gonna do, um, thick whisper white because I feel like it doesn't bleed quite as much. My stamp pad fell off the other side of the table and I forgot to grab it. All right, here we go. So I'm using my Stamparatus. It's going to be a lot easier for you to line up the other parts of our cats if you use your Stamparatus, okay? So I'm going to stamp him there and let's see this, this guy, we're just going to leave him like that. But this guy, we're gonna put the stripes on him. So, and I will tell you that I have tried to line these up without using the Stamparatus, and I cannot do it. I am zero, I have a zero success rate. So the Stamparatus is perfect 
for a stamp like that. Even though it's photopolymer and you can see exactly where you're stamping, there's a lot of things to line up here. You know, you've got to line up his back, his tails, his ears. So that's why I prefer to use the Stamparatus. Now, we've got a second plate that we're going to use. So I don't have to take my cat off. So I lined it up. I'm going to open it. And again with Memento Black, I'm going to stamp those stripes. All right, look at him, he's so cute. All right, now we need just a, a plain cat. So I'm gonna move my paper down a little bit. Nope, that was too far. Like that. And I wanted him down towards the bottom of the paper so that the punch would fit up there. What am I doing? We're not doing this striped guy. We're gonna do this guy. I mean, I guess we could give this guy stripes. Now, we, I want my cats to all look different. I saw a very cute cat this morning on my walk. We don't have cats. My husband is allergic to cats, but I love cats, they're so cute. All right, so we've got those two. Those are the normal facing. Now I want one to face the other way. So I have got my um, silicone mat. That's what this is. You can find this um, at the bottom of today's post. I have a supply list and this is on there. It's not very expensive at all, it's a few dollars. And I would strongly encourage you to add it to your list if you haven't done so already. Um, the other thing I like to do with this, well you can mix your embossing paste, you can mix your shimmer paint, um, but it's really great for my hot glue gun too. When I'm using it, I like to set it on here. So you know how the hot glue gun like drips, they just all peel right off. So it's really cool, I like it. Okay, now you have probably seen me do this. We did this during a Facebook Friday, which, what was it? It was for the letter J in joy. I can't remember, but it wasn't a J. I don't, it was a candy cane. That's what we did it with. So we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to stamp our cat on the silicone mat, right on it. And then I'm going to take my paper and I'm going to lay it down right on the cat. I'm going to rub it. Okay, now I'm not going to re-ink this because this is going to be the back side, but this is, I'm going to stamp it again right where it's at because that's going to show me where to punch it when I line up my punch. The only thing is you've got to remember what is the front and what is the back. So I'm going to turn it over and hopefully remember that that's the front because I could see myself coloring the back and <laughs> not realizing it. A lot of times I'll take a pencil and mark it like this is the front and this is the back. See how our kitties are facing two different ways? All right, let me grab my blends. I can't believe I didn't grab them. We're going to use Mango Melody, Pumpkin Pie, and Crumb Cake, which is probably my most used Stampin' Blends. I love, nope, that's soft suede. I love Crumb Cake. Huh, here we go. Somebody asked me this morning about storing your Stampin' Blends, and Stampin' Up! recommends that you store them horizontally like this. If you store them like this, the ink will, you know, go down um, and be more concentrated down here. So these, they recommend storing them on their side like that, and we sell stamp cases by themselves that are for the wood mount so they're thicker and they hold the Stampin' Blends in there. So if you're looking for something to hold your Stampin' Blends, check that out. You just um, can search the, the Stampin' Up! store, um, just stamp case. Now I'm going to do my cat completely in light pumpkin pie. And when we color with our blends, if you want to do shading, think about where it would be the darkest. And that's going to be anywhere that things are overlapping. Like his leg here is overlapping his stomach. And the light, let's say if the light was up above, it would be shining right there on his back. So I'm going to leave that white for a little while. 
I'm going to take my dark stamp and blend and I'm going to run it behind his leg there, up his chest. And if the light is over here, this side of his body would be a little bit darker. The leg behind would be darker and probably around the bottom. Now our stamp and blends have two ends. It has the bullet tip and the brush tip. I'm taking my light um, pumpkin pie and coloring it in, blending it all together. And because I wanted that to be lighter, I'm gonna go over all of this and then just do a light trip right there. So see how it goes from dark to light? I have been asked before, what's the best end of the Stampin' Blend to use? And it's to me, 100% um, preference, personal preference. Some people love the um, brush tip. I find that I only like to use the brush tip when I am coloring a large area. Um, like the cat right here. So I'll use the brush tip. Um, I get out of the lines frequently when I use the brush tip. So I only use it when I am really trying to get a large area. This is Mango Melody. Now I'm gonna go back in with the dark and the Mango Melody is a little bit yellow. So I'm gonna give him a little more dark. I'm gonna switch over. A little more dark to make him a little more orangey. The cat I saw this morning was, um, it was like a very soft gray and white, and then maybe like a little bit of tan. It was the cutest little cat. He didn't want anything to do with me either. He ran, as cats do. Okay, so there we've got two. Now this guy, let's make sure that's the back because he's facing a different direction. I'm gonna make him just a brown cat. We had a cat when I was a kid and I don't know if my mom is on here because she and I have two different memories of the cat. We remember him two different ways. She said he wasn't very nice or friendly, but I remember him differently. My brother found him, if I remember correctly, and his name, or her name, I don't even know, I don't even remember, was it a, no, it was a girl. Her name was Mickey. <laughs> That's such a kid name, right? And Mickey, um, I think she was part Siamese. And she would come to my window at night, in the middle of the night, and start scratching on my, on my bedroom window. And I would let her in, and then she would sleep in my bed. I think about that now, and I think that's so weird. So weird. But back then, when I was a kid, I was like, oh yeah, that's my cat, middle of the night, 2 a.m., scratching at my window. I knew what it was, it didn't scare me. Now, I think if I heard something scratching at my window, I would probably die of a heart attack. We don't have a cat now. My girls ask for a cat all the time. But my husband, when he was a child, was asthmatic and couldn't be around cats. And he's not asthmatic anymore, but we use that excuse. We have two dogs and two rabbits. I think we're, we've got enough pets. Plus their hair, all the hair. All right, Irene, I make it look easy. Well, I do it a lot. The more you do it, the easier it will get. You just have to practice, you know, stamp a bunch of images and sit in front of the TV at night and just color, just color. Watch YouTube videos on, you know, shading and, um, and then it does get easier. Okay, so here's our punch. It punches, you know, the punch is great. Um, when I was getting inspiration for this, I, I looked on Pinterest and there are so many cute projects that just use the punch. So like a silhouette of the cat. So that's another way to use that punch, just as a silhouette. Now remember, we stamped on the rubber sheet, laid it down, then stamped again. So this is the back. Look, it actually looks like he's colored. And this is the front. So if I was gonna punch it, look, it doesn't match up. That's why we punched it on the back. Ta-da, because we can punch it out. And it matches, look. And now we have three little kitties. It's like the, the gang of cats that roam the neighborhood at night. <laughs> I think every neighborhood has those cats. Okay, so we've got our cats made. Let's get started on our card. 
Um, this, again, like I said, is a card box. Now, not to be confused with a box and a card, because that's another project, um, but a card box card. Here are all the measurements, you guys. Remember, it's all on my blog. Don't feel like you have to go write it down. This is a full-size piece of cardstock, eight and a half by 11, and we're gonna score the long side at two, three and three fourths, seven and a fourth, and nine, and then turn it and score the short side at one and three fourths, and six and three fourths. Now we need to do something else, and actually I'm gonna leave this here so I can mark it. Right here in the middle, you need to make a little mark at five and a half on both sides. You can do this with a pencil, but I just use my scoring tool since I have it. Then you need a ruler, and you're gonna score a line from that mark to this corner right here, okay? So put your, put your um, scoring tool there, move your ruler so that it lines up, and just make a mark, all right? Who knew you could score without the scoreboard? Sometimes you can. All right, so put that there, line it up on both sides. All right, that's gonna help that fold in when we close the card. All right, did I even get my adhesive today? Yes, there it is. Okay, at least I remembered that. <laughs> all right, burnish all your lines. If you have your bone folder, use your bone folder. I'm being lazy and not using mine. It's right here and I should have used it. Okay, now these, we want to fold them and burnish those lines that we that we made with our ruler because when we close our card, that's how it's gonna close up, okay? Make sure I, well, I didn't fold it correctly. There we go. And then this, this one, make sure I can see it. Fold it right. It should just kind of naturally fall in place, but okay, now we've got everything folded, right? Um, this card, let's see, it's going to open like this. See that? And that's going to fold in. I'm trying to remember what I did. It's been a while since I designed this card, you guys. <laughs> okay, we're going to cut it. Hold on. You know, you guys, I've slept since then. Help me remember. We're gonna cut it. Good grief, Erica. Now I'm questioning myself. I don't wanna make a mistake. Like that, like that, like that. Oh my gosh. All right. I'm scaring myself. Yes, cut this one. <laughs> I'm an expert, can you tell? All right, let me make sure. Like that, like that, and like that. Yes. Now we have it. You're gonna cut all the four corners off. I do this for a living, can you believe that? Somebody lets me do this for a living. All right, cut that all the way up. Cut the four corners off. I think I left my brain in Vegas, in Utah. Cut in like that. Cut that corner and that corner and then cut in. Okay, now I'm gonna lay it down so you can see it because I know when I watch a video, I like to just see what it looks like so it makes sense. Okay, you guys, can you see that? Oh, Carla, I am very human. Very human, believe me. Very human. I do silly things all the time. All right, before we assemble it, let's put our paper on here. That'll be easier than to try to do it once it's assembled. This is the Twinkle Twinkle Designer Series paper. You know, it's the baby paper. You can find it in the annual catalog. And this print in particular is my favorite. It's the night sky. And I thought, you know, these cats that prowl around at night like my Mickey used to. That would be perfect for our, our prowling cats. Okay, now I cut out, have you guys seen this framelit? It's the Sitting Pretty Framelits, also in the annual catalog. It came out last June. And 
I originally was going to use the, oh, you know, the staircase from the Christmas framelit set that has the staircase, but it wasn't quite right. It made the cats look too big. You know, it wasn't really sized right. And so I switched and I'm going to use the bench. All right, so I cut the bench in basic gray and we're going to put it right here. And let's see which cat. This guy sits up here. Now let me tell you something that I did. The little white outline that's around him kind of bugged me. So when I made it, I actually trimmed all that off. But that kind of defeats the point of the punch, right? Um, so I'm going to leave it because I don't think you'll notice it once you actually get everything in place, okay? All right, so that cat is going to sit on top because, you know, cats go wherever they want. They don't care if you tell them don't sit on your furniture. They will sit on your furniture. My dogs are, are like that too, so I, I, can't, I can't be prejudiced and say it's just cats. This guy, I put him over a little bit. See how his tail is going to be over that line? So I'm just going to kind of fold it a little bit so when it closes, it'll close it like that, okay? All right, now the moon. I have a piece of Mango Melody cardstock, and I'm going to take my two-inch circle punch on the corner and just punch like that. That way, it's going to line up right there. Maybe this side will, this time we'll put it here because that cat's up pretty high. Okay, right there. But I also wanted to give it a little more dimension. So I've got a part of a Stampin' Sponge, Mango Melody ink. And I'm going to ink the edges. And I probably am going to get ink all over me too because I'm messy. All right, so we'll put that there. All right, now let's put some adhesive on these guys, these four tabs on the outside, and fold them in like that, okay? So this is where it looks like a box. And this is exactly how I make boxes with these tabs like this. You know, and you can, one thing that I do on my boxes is cut a little bit of that cardstock off on the corners like that. So now I'm going to put some more adhesive. It will reduce the bulk there for you if it's too bulky. Like that. You can do that if you want. There. Okay, so now the box, and this is how it closes. These guys pinch in and it all meets in the middle. Wouldn't that be fun to send somebody a little surprise like, ta-da, I've got a box for you inside. There's cats. <laughs> it's cute. I think it's cute. All right, now to keep it closed, we're going to take a belly band. This is a piece of Knight of Navy cardstock, one and a fourth, where are my notes? One and a fourth by nine. And I'm going to wrap it around. No need to really um, score it unless you're really, I mean, I don't know why you would need to, just fold it around and it's going to overlap, put a little bit of adhesive there on that end and fold it over like that. Okay, so see how that's going to work? It just slides. You're not adhering it to the card. Don't do that because then it's permanently closed. And then a piece of the wood textures. Hmm, I like both sides. I always have such trouble deciding which side to use on this paper because I love it. All right, now here's our orange cat. If I was to get a cat, it would be orange. I've always wanted an orange cat. And they're usually males. That's what I've heard. Orange cats are usually male. That's interesting, isn't it? All right, he's going to sit there. Now we need to, before we move on, let's stamp the sentiment. And did I get rid of all my white? Here it is. We're going to do this and we're going to split it. It says, a friend like you comes around once in nine lives. So cute. So punny. I like when they are puns. Now I want to ink just part of it. So I'm going to take some post-it notes and I'm going to cover up those words. And the reason why I can't go straight across is because that Y, let's see if you guys can see that Y goes down. So I'm using two post-it notes to cover up 
those words and I'm going to stamp in Night of Navy. Don't forget to take your post-it notes off before you stamp. Don't ask me how I know that. All right, so I'm going to stamp right there on the edge of my Whisper White. And oh, you guys are so funny. Thank you, Irene. Uh, that is very sweet. All right, I just cleaned it. <sighs> Got to let it dry a little bit with my chamois. And now I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to cover up the top words. Look at this post-it note holder, you guys. Do you see this? My downline, Brittany, I don't know if she's watching. She made this for me, and I am obsessed with it. Isn't that cute? So cute. She sends me cute stuff all the time. She's very talented herself. Okay. You know, it's my block is still a little bit wet. Let's get a bigger one. I don't want to use, I'm kind of hoarding these post-it notes because I don't want to run out. I guess I could stick more in the little book when, when I run out. Okay, I think we've got it all covered like that. Oh, there's Brittany. Did you recognize it, Brittany? Did you say, hey, she's using it. I love it. All right, now we've got the bottom. So I'm just going to come over here and stamp that in the bottom. And if you were not me and you were not making a video, you would get your trimmer and cut these nice and neat. But I am making a video and my groceries are on their way. So we're just going to do scissors. All right. Is everybody okay with that? It's not going to be perfect, but I'm totally okay with that. All right. So comes around once in nine lives. Here's another thing. When you stamp a night of navy on Whisper White, give it some time to dry because it is it will smear and so hopefully today I do not smear it I gotta look at my sample you guys seriously it's been a while since I made this and by a while I only mean like three or four days it's frightening it's frightening what my memory has done the older I get too many files open at once in my brain okay so we're gonna put this one the first one a friend like you, I'm going to slide it behind, and I don't want to stick it to the card. Make sure your dimensional is low enough. A friend like you. And then this one, oh, I keep pulling that apart. This one, I'm going to put, let's see, I'm just going to put this one flat in here like that. Okay, you guys see that? They're so cute. He kind of looks angry, that guy. I don't know why. It's the same stamp, but his face, he looks like he's planning something. He's plotting some naughty behavior. Now, you could do something similar with a dog. You know, we've got the dog um, punch and the dog stamp set. That's so cute. Okay, two things left, and you guys know me. It's got to have a bow. And lately, have you noticed, I can't stop using my gingham ribbon. I am hoping and wishing and praying that Stampin' Up! will give us some more colors in this ribbon in the next catalog. All right, there's a gingham bow. And I'm going to use my mini glue dots. If I can get it unstuck. And let's see, we're just going to put it right there under him. Kind of need to adjust it so we can see the sentiment like that. And last but not least, let's use those, those little twinkle sequins. This is also with that suite of product, the baby stuff, but we're using it for not baby. And this is the take your pick tool. On one end, I've got a little putty that I squeeze. Looks like I'm reaching the bottom. Might be time to get some of my refills out. And I'm just gonna grab my twinkle stars with the putty. Look at that and add a few of these because why not? We've got them, let's use them. Don't let them sit in a, in a drawer somewhere. Okay, you guys, what do you think? Fun, right? No, putty, we don't want you on the card. A card box. Looks like a card, but it's a box. 
you guys. Thanks so much. You're so sweet. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you for the hearts. Now remember, hop over to my blog, pinkbuckaroo.com. I will add the direct link here when um, I'm done and I edit the video. Um, hey, there's Mike. Um, and um, what was I going to say? All of the details are over there. The measurements, the products that I used, and a link to order. If you want to put your order in by Friday, you'll get Friday's make, or no, by Monday, you'll get Friday's make and takes for free. Did you notice this right here on the countdown? 11 days. That's all we have left of celebration. Only 11 days to get free stuff with your order. You guys, don't wait. And if you've been thinking about that starter kit, you've only got 11 days left to get $175 for just $99, plus that really cute bag option that you can get, okay? Don't ca call me or email me on April 1st and say, oops, I forgot. Is it too late? Because I'm going to say, yeah, because there's nothing I can do about any of it on April 1st, okay? If you have questions about any of that, feel free to message me. Here's a sneak peek to one of the things we're going to make on Friday. Here's a cat sitting in a box. <laughs> He's cute. Okay, you guys, that's it. I'll see you on Friday over on my group page, um, Pink Buckaroo Stampers Group at 2 o'clock Central. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I hope you guys have a great week. Bye.